I've got this part here which is cylinder vert and I'm going to quickly go through creating a drawing. So if you go to a new drawing by going up here or pressing Control N, uh, I actually have a template already made so I'm going to use this one. And now you'll get what's called your drawing environment. As you can see we have a sheet of paper so you could actually do parts of your drawing over here. But it's sort of similar to Microsoft Word, this piece of paper is actually what's going to be printed. This is a print area. So as with everything, you're going to start with a base view. So everything that you do from now on will be based upon this view. So because I've got the cylinder vert already open, it knows that that's what I'd like to do a drawing of. So I'm going to just change the scale. You can see if you hover over the screen, you can see what it's going to look like. I can see it's going to be a bit small, so I'm going to change that to the next ISO standard up, which is 2 to 1. I think I might be able to get away with 3 to 1. So now if I, you can also change the orientation here to the top view and all this stuff. So this is what's set from your model. So remember that view cube in the top right. So this is the front view as you would see from the view cube. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click down now. And what Inventor does is it's built up that base view for you. But what you can see up here is actually defaulted to go into the projected view tool. So now what I'm actually going to be doing is projecting views from this. So now if I click down you can see there's a square. So it hasn't actually populated the view, but what it's done is saying this is where your next view is going to be, and what I can do is I'm going to put an isometric in there as well. And you can see it's put another square in there. And the reason it does that is this is a very simple part, of course, but if this was more complex, it's quite a lot of computing power to build up those views. So what you need to do is when you're happy with your view placement, if you right-click, you can go to Create. And then when you do that, it actually populates the views. Now that one catches people out on the ACU exam. There is a, a question about placing views down. A lot of people place the views down and then click Next without actually creating them. So you must make sure you go into Create View. Now if you want to edit a view, if I go over here, you can see there's a fence which has come around this isometric view. If I now right click and go to Edit View, or alternatively you can just double click, it opens this Edit View box. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my... Um, isometric view to shaded and just to show you I'm going to go on to here where it says view identifier I'm just going to change that to say isometric view and you can see that it's going to put the scale in as well so just checking that and now if I press uh, before I do that I'm just going to underline it just because I think it looks better if I press OK you can see it's put that in there and now what we're going to do is we're going to start dimensioning our part. So we've done the view placement. Of course you can do projected views, auxiliary views, section views, detail views, but this is quite a simple part, so we're not going to do that. Uh, later on I'll do some harder parts, so we'll be able to go through that if you watch other videos. So I'm going to just now go to the Annotate tab, and what that allows you to do is annotate your drawing. So you've got dimensions, you've got whole notes, You've got leaders and you've even got welding symbols, surface symbols, um, and you can add GDT by using feature control frames and datum points and that sort of thing. Again, we're quite lucky, this is a simple part, so I'm just going to add some dimensions to start with. So if you go up to here, press dimension or D on the keyboard, you can then go over, like, it works exactly the same as it does in the sketch environment, so if I click on this line here and then drop it down, you can see it's 28mm, and it comes up if you want to edit this, but I'm there's a checkbox here. I'm actually going to untick this because I don't want this box to pop up every time I add a dimension. So I hit OK, that's right, 28. And you can see Inventor knows this is a diameter, so it's put the diameter sign in for me. So now, next, if we do the height, for example, and put in 24, you can see it hasn't put a diameter in because it knows that this isn't a diameter. So it is intuitive, it's very good. Uh, the other thing we're now going to do is, of course, we need to add things like center marks. So for this view up here, we need to add a centre mark. So you've got a tool up here, you just click on centre mark, click on the circle you want to add it to, and you can see it's put it in for me. And of course, we should put it on these three as well. And the other type you've got here, you can add in a centre line by drawing it manually, but there's this quite a nifty tool here, so a centre line bisector. Now what you can do is if I select, say, this line and this line, you can see it adds in that centre line for me down the middle, which is quite handy. I'm just going to extend can extend that up just to make it a bit clearer. That's a center line. Uh, now the other thing we need to do is just do some more dimensions on this top face here. So let's, for example, uh, 
And because I did these using the hole tool, which is very important that you do that when you're modelling, I can use the hole and thread note. Now, of course, for this they are only 6mm through hole, so it's not really giving me a lot of information. But if I had done, for example, a 6mm through hole with a 10mm countersink at 55 degrees, all of that information would be pulled through. And if I had a thread, then, of course, the designation comes through and the metric profile and all that sort of thing. So it's pretty handy. So I'm going to add this one on here. And just to show you another way, I'm going to do one up here. And I'm going to double click on this so I can edit it. And then I'm just going to put... Uh, no, I put three times, and then we know that that's for all of these. There, another dimension I'm going to put in. It's between here of eight millimeters, and what we can do is we can add a PCD, a pitch circle diameter, to this. So if I go on, um, I just delete these ones just to show you. I'm going to put that dimension back in. So I've just deleted those centre marks in there just to show you another tool which is a centred pattern. So if you wanted to actually put a PCD in as well, you can click on this and the first place you need to click is the centre of that pattern. And then what you can do afterwards is you then add the three that are around there and you can see it started to give me that PCD circle there. And it's also given me the centre points, if you see what I mean. And then I'm just going to finish up this circle here. So right click create and I'm just going to actually extend that just so it joins up. But you can now see it's actually put in the PCD line there. So, of course, you can dimension that line there. Look, so radius 8. And it also puts in these center marks. So, you could actually put in the angle as well. But for this drawing, there is now enough information here for somebody to manufacture it. So, I'm happy with this. So, you can see down here some of these items need to change. Design by is wrong. The scale is not correct. We're going to add in the scale. Uh, also the title's not there so if I go up into here and I properties and let's just change the author uh, the title is cylinder vert and uh, we we'll go through to project uh, let's say the part number is CV for cylinder vert 001 and the design let's change that as well to and the creation date is today so we'll leave that as it is uh, revision number we'll say is A and of course you can add all of these properties in and then they, they can be used as meta tags to search for as well. So um, let's just put um, I'm gonna hit apply and close. And you can see all of that's updated. So we've got M Westlake in there and Cylinder Vert and C V double O one and it's edition A. Uh, one thing is the scale, so you can't I have that's actually a, a text input. So if you go into your drawing border over here, the ISO one, if you edit the definition, you can then come in here and, and edit this. So if I go zoom in just for clarity. Double click in there and you can change it from not scale to three to one. Hit OK. And then you finish your sketch and save the changes. And you can see we've got the scale right, the mass is in there. So that's good. When we're finished, we just go up to save. And in here, I'm going to create a new folder just called Drawings. And in there, we're going to call it Cylinder Vert, so that's good. Uh, press Save. So, just a quick run over we used the Base View tool to create this first view. We then projected this plan, an isometric view off of it using Projected. We then went into Annotate, used Dimension to add all these dimensions. We used the Whole Note to add these notes here. We then use the center mark and the center mark bisector to add the main center point and this center line. And we also use this pattern to get this PCD in here. We then went to eye properties and edited things in there. And we also changed this border down here. Uh, and that's pretty much everything you'll need to know at a basic level for creating a drawing.